Thanks, Kate. Great to be with you. Thank you. So we uh, know in our many conversations that you've never been a huge supporter of the president. You call him out when need be. You support policies when when they agree with yours. How do you answer this question? Would, will you back President Trump's reelection bid? Well, just as Susan Collins said, uh, like her, I supported John Kasich in the primary, and I did not uh, vote for uh, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton uh, in 2016, uh, and uh, I'm not prepared to support him in, in 2020. Uh, and, and right now, as, as many have said, uh, let's watch the midterms. Uh, I think once these midterms occur, and if the midterms are, don't go very well for my party, uh, I suspect you'll see a number of Republicans uh, talking about making some changes at the top of the ticket. But even before then, what does it say that so many Republicans, and, and I think that I would put you and Susan Collins in, in, in one category, but then you have John Cornyn, John Thune, leaders in the Republican Senate, saying that they're not prepared, it's too early for them to even say. What does it say that those, that, that, senator, that those senators cannot, cannot, won't say if they will support the president? Well, it's clear to me, many of my Republican colleagues in Congress have reservations about the, uh, the president's conduct in office. I think even though there may be agreement on some policies, on the deregulatory moves or on, on uh, the tax reform, uh, there's concern on some policies uh, like trade. But more broadly, I think there's just a general concern about the dysfunction and chaos that we've grown accustomed to in the White House. And I think that mm -hmm. has become very unsettling and uh, challenging for members of my party. And take, for example, too, the, the recently enacted budget agreement and then spending bill, which was negotiated with the White House and the administration, and only then to have the president come out and say that he didn't support it. And, right. well, he ended up signing it, but those are the types of things that I, I do believe get members upset. Or with the health care bill, you know, when I, I opposed the House health care bill and the president, you know, was pretty direct with me about, you know, his displeasure with me for opposing yeah. it, only to call that bill mean later. Yeah. So, but it is presenting uh, I, just a surprising moment where uh, Republicans cannot say if they've supported the president and speak out supporting him, they cannot say that they would support him, kind of punting it to say, um, we don't even know if he's going to run for re-election, when we absolutely do. Listen here to Senator Ron Johnson, if you will, please, Congressman. Sure. It could be a completely different world by 2020. We have a 2018 election first. So, I, you know, listen, I understand the kind of gotcha, gotcha question you're engaging here, but it's, it's just way too early to even be talking about it. How is this a gotcha question? Please tell me. Oh, it's it's not a gotcha question. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward question. The, the fact is, many of my Republican colleagues have very serious reservations about President Trump's performance yes. in office. It's it's that it's that simple. Even if there may be agreement with some of the broader policy issues, is this uh, one of the reasons? Really the is this one it's of the, the reasons you're retiring? Well, it is. It is a reason that I'm retiring. It is not the reason I'm retiring. I've had. I've I've been in office now for. Uh, 28 years between state and federal service. I've run for office 13 times. I'm 13 and no. No sane person should run for office more than 13 times. Uh, <laughs> but uh, bottom line is, I, I've had a, you know, I just, I just felt it was the right time for me to do other things. But yes, this, this dysfunction, this chaos, uh, this uh, never-ending drama is, is frustrating. And, and to be candid, it, it predates Donald Trump. I don't want to put it all on him. It's not, okay. it wouldn't be fair. I mean, I, I, Congress has had a tough time dealing with some of the basics and the fundamentals. I've noticed this you know, just uh, getting we, the extremes in both parties are such now that uh, they, they, they dominate. And uh, and uh, it, it seems that the, the American political center is underrepresented in Congress right now. Uh, we we need people who have the capacity to get the yes. We need more pragmatic members of Congress. Too many find political safety, you know, on, on the base. And they listen well, too much to some of the fringe elements of the bases. And, and more of the political center, you are all retiring. Um, so you have announced, of course, that you were not running for re-election, but you also just said that you're going to leave earlier than I think a lot of folks anticipated. What changed for you, Congressman? Well, since I announced in September, you know, I've been exploring various, you know, professional opportunities, and it just seems that, uh, you know, those per those discussions have progressed, and though I have not finalized anything, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would prefer to make those final decisions uh, when I'm out of Congress rather than when I'm in. I think a lot of people would respect that and appreciate that. Focus on the job at hand first, if you would. Um, you are one of the House sponsors of the bill to protect Robert Mueller, of course, the special counsel, um, the special, the special counsel in the Russia investigation. Um, here is what the president said about firing him. Here's what he said just yesterday. Listen to this. 
They've been saying, I'm going to get rid of them for the last three months, four months, five months, and uh, they're still here. Does that change anything for you? Well, look, the, the president should not fire Director Mueller, plain and simple. It would be terrible for the country, uh, bad for the American people. It, it, candidly, it would be bad for the president himself. This would be an Archibald Cox moment, a so-called, you know, Saturday night mm -hmm. massacre. Um, it would just, uh, in many ways, it would, it would impact Republicans in the midterm elections in very negative ways. So there, there is no good reason for him to fire Director Mueller. It would certainly have an impact on the rule of law, people's confidence in our system of justice. So he needs to, to, to stop thinking about it and let the, if, he's, if, he's, if he feels he's innocent, he should act like he's innocent. Uh, it's that simple. And you don't simple. think he's acting that uh, way now? So, and, well, I think Trey Gowdy said it pretty well uh, not too long ago. And, and the reason we've introduced the legislation was we, we, ha we have no expectation uh, that this legislation would become law because it would require a presidential signature. Well, that's exactly right. We're simply right. sending a message. We're sending a message to the president, you know, that there are a number of us in both parties who think it would be a mistake. Even Republicans who haven't co-sponsored my bill, many feel, as I do, that it would be a terrible mistake to fire Director Mueller. So in this moment where we're, ask, we're asking these, I guess we're going to call them gotcha questions now, even though I know you agreed that it wasn't, you can count Charlie Dent is not endorsing President Trump for his re-election, is what I hear today. Charlie Dent, <laughs> it's great to Pretty see much. you. And I, I also heard you say in another interview, you were finishing out your term um, unopposed and unindicted. In this day and age, that's a double win. <laughs> I stole that line from my former colleague, Tom Davis. That was his line. <laughs> Good. So. I like it.